Welcome everyone to New York City on a beautiful March day. Manhattan, as always, is a beehive of activity. And we have a great day of basketball action on tap at Madison Square Garden on Broadway. It's Championship Week, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Day two of the Big East Championship, brought to you by Aeropostal. In the first of four quarterfinal games today, we begin with top seed Georgetown and Villanova, a rematch of the season's most controversial finish. Under 10 seconds to go. Cunningham came the screen. Rivers, good defense, blocked the pass. It's on the floor. Georgetown has it. Wallace! Wallace. Oh, a foul with one tenth of a no. second to go! And Jay Wright can't believe it. And that's the foul you call with a tenth of a second to go. Oh, yeah. That's brutal. Wallace, the best free throw shooter in Georgetown history. What a way to end the ball game. A controversial ending in the regular season. Today, the rematch between Georgetown and Villanova in the first Big East Championship quarterfinal. Later this afternoon, Connecticut takes on West Virginia. Tonight, it's Louisville and Pittsburgh, Notre Dame and Marquette. Hello, everyone, and welcome to New York. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us. Villanova advanced yesterday with a come-from-behind win over Syracuse, the 20th win of the year for the Wildcats. Certainly, that puts them in better shape with an eye toward the NCAA tournament. Perhaps a win today over the Big East champ. Georgetown gets them in. This game's got classic written all over it. It's about matchups. It's about three-point shooting, and it's about turnovers. In the last ball game, Villanova shot three of 23 from the three-point line, but they turned Georgetown over 18 times. I think Villanova has got a great shot in this game. If they can press Georgetown, slow them down, then they'll have to guard them for about 20 seconds per possession in the half court. It was a slow, plodding, foul-filled affair in the regular season. Bill Georgetown, they had a terrific regular season, winning all the close ones, 6-0 in the Big East in games decided by five points or less as they won the regular season championship for the second year in a row. You know, we have the problem with big guys. How do you keep them happy? No moaning. Give them touches, and I think that's what they have to do with Roy Hibbert. He's a talented kid. I think he's too unselfish and the other aspect against Louisville Georgetown wanted to beat the press and score they did not I think they're gonna have to do that today as we look at Star Wars presented by MLB 2k8 Scotty Reynolds starred in the regular season game between these two and he was tremendous yesterday in the win over Syracuse well he's the engine that makes this team go 22 points six assists without a single turnover against Syracuse 24 points the last time that Villanova played Georgetown. A big-time guard that can really shoot it when he's hot. And then you got Hibbert. Give him some touches. See if Villanova stays small or they have to play big. He's a terrific asset. Use him. And now the starting lineups brought to you by Aero Postal. Villanova at 20 and 11. Corey Stokes off a career-high 18 inserted into the starting lineup today in the backcourt with Scotty Reynolds, Antonio Pena, Dwayne Anderson, and Dante Cunningham up front. For Georgetown at 25 and 4, they've won five in a row, 15 and 3 in the conference. They had yesterday off with the first round bye, and that veteran starting group of Wallace, Sapp, Freeman, Summers, and Hibbert, they have combined for a career 374 starts. This broadcast available in high definition on ESPN HD presented by Olivia. Brian O'Connell throws the ball in the air. And Georgetown's Roy Hibbert controlled the tip. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, the Villanova Wildcats. Go! Villanova's going to have to play straight up when they play this man-to-man. -man. They can't afford to let drives and backdoor cuts turn into open threes on it. And Sean, when they switch on Hibbert, they should take advantage. Preston Austin Freeman with the miss. He's been hot lately and was just named to the Big East All-Rookie Team. Now he can shoot it, Sean. He's a good offensive rebounder as well. Tends to turn it over. He had six turnovers against Louisville. Can't let that happen in this one. Now DeJuan Summers, their second leading score for the year, hits a three. His 44th three of the year. He averages 11 points per game. Uh, Villanova likes to junk it up. A lot of matchup, a lot of switching. Outside shooting can certainly help Hibbert eventually. A win yesterday over Syracuse, the fifth year in a row that Villanova has won its first game at the Big East Tournament. And now they need to get past the Georgetown hurdle. They've never defeated the Hoyas at the Big East Tournament. Jay Wright is in his seventh season. 
as head coach at Villanova. Georgetown knocked Villanova out of the tournament here last year, a game in which the Hoyas got ahead 26-2 to start and then hung on for a five-point win. Antonio Pena, the bucket for the Cats. Pretty impressive, Jay, huh, the footwork? And here comes the 1-2-2 two, two, three-quarter court pressure trying to slow Georgetown down because they don't really beat it to score. And I think they're going to have to open look here for Wallace. The rainbow, a little wet, give him a towel. He's the guy that can absolutely kill you from the perimeter. And over his last seven games, he's been especially good shooting 50% from three. And averaging 14 points per game during that span. That was career three, number 227 for Wallace, adding to his Georgetown record. Cunningham shot never did get up to the rim, and then he had it ripped away by Jesse Sapp, who's back in his native New York City. Georgetown getting up and down the court really well. That's a good sign for the Hoyas. Yeah, they like to play with a little haste, yeah, but then they're so smart in their half-court approach. If they have the benefit of the rest as one of the top four seeds. They had a first round bye yesterday, while Villanova played in the noon game against Syracuse yesterday. And there's the back cut. That spin dribble dictates it. Yeah, Villanova saw that one coming, and Reynolds couldn't handle the long outlet pass. Georgetown leads all time, and they've had the upper hand lately. The last four meetings decided by five points or less, and Georgetown's won the last three. And as we know, that Villanova has never beaten Georgetown here, including the meeting head-to-head -head last year. Dwayne Anderson called for the foul as they went to trap Dewan Summers. John Thompson, the third, has rescored the glory at Georgetown. 97 wins in his fourth season. Back-to-back -back Big East regular season titles. And now trying to make it back-to-back -back Big East tournament titles as well. He has done a great job down there. The Subway alumni are in force here in New York, too. Nice button hook. Summer strong move to the left hand. It rolled out. And then he came free to Scotty Reynolds, the sophomore from Herndon, Virginia, just outside Washington, D.C. Summer's really good when he makes that cut of snapping back into the post. Uh, Scotty, uh, he's been great at getting in there and making decisions. That time gets the foul. Not coming up empty. Did they give that to Hibbert, Sean? They did. It's the first on Hibbert. Well, the fouls were a huge story in the uh, regular season meeting back in mid-February at the Verizon Center. There were 48 fouls called in the game, 24 on each team, with a total of 51 free throws shot. Reynolds made the first free throw. He's 78% for the year. You know who's good that day, though, Sean? You only questioned half of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a lot of people questioning that call with a tenth of a second to go in a tie game. Jonathan Wallace went to the line and won it. Uh, you're right. I think everybody felt just get it to overtime. Maybe Georgetown would have prevailed. You never know. Villanova's got to start taking away that diagonal pass, making it more difficult. They're getting broken down that way and having to cover too much ground. And, of course, this matchup, if you cut and make yourself prepared, you're going to get open looks. That's twice. Wallace in either corner, nailing it. Not only more threes than anybody in Georgetown history for Jonathan Wallace, but he's also the most accurate three-point shooter in school history, just under 43%. And Juan Summers called for his second personal foul, so that'll have him heading to the bench. And Patrick Ewing checks in. He just won the Big East Sixth Man of the Year award at the banquet here a couple of nights ago. Does so many things, not just defensively. He can knock down a perimeter shot. He gets to the rim. Make steals. Well, I think he's going to be a pro. I really do. I, th I think he's got, he's a player like Ronaldo Baldwin, but better. NBA three wouldn't drop for Dwayne Anderson. Wallace from the NBA line, feeling it. He has three threes already. And a timeout called by Jay Wright. The regular season champs and number one seed, Georgetown, off to a great start. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery back at the Big East Championship. Three threes for Jonathan Wallace, the senior from Harvest, Alabama. And the Hoyas are off to a quick 12-4 lead over Villanova.
Jonathan Wallace is a respected player. You're always under control, a great leader. And as you can see from the start, a terrific shooter that has been on a tear over his last seven. 43% from deep. Look at this. Take advantage with the bounce. Good play by Hibbert. Reynolds got stuck in the air. It hit Hibbert and went out of bounds, and now we get to a media timeout. Still 12 to 4, Georgetown. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Aero Postal. Make it happen. And in part by the Ford F-150. Build Ford Tough. Well, beautiful day for sightseeing here in the New York City area. Take a picture of the Brooklyn Bridge. Georgetown leading Villanova inside Madison Square Garden 12 to 4. Patrick Ewing Jr. just came in for La Jolla. Of course, his dad, a great All-American and National Player of the Year at Georgetown in the mid-80s, came on to New York to play for the Knicks before finishing his career elsewhere. He was a teammate of Doc Rivers with the Knicks in the early and mid-90s. Doc Rivers now the head coach of the Celtics. Here at the ball game today, watching his son Jeremiah, who is just now checking in to the game. Outstanding defender for Coach John Thompson III. Was Patrick up for voting for the Hall of Fame this year? It'll be interesting. I think he should make it. There's number 3-3. Three, three. If he and doesn't, there should be an investigation. <laughs> That's the truth. And, of course, Doc, just not only a terrific coach, but such a pleasant guy. Everybody respects the heck out of him. And how about that stroke? you got to respect that. Boy, somebody is hot, and that's Corey Stokes. Yesterday, he was shooting a lot. That's a layup for him compared to yesterday. You're right. He's back by the heels on half court. They've done a nice job breaking down this matchup. Passing and cutting. Nice. Freeman dribbled into trouble. Almost got tied up by Dwayne Anderson. Now Rivers. Good double. Good double. Hibbert might have taken a knee from Cunningham. And Stokes went on the floor to get it. Now Shane Clark, who was another good performer off the Villanova bench yesterday with 11 <laughs> points and 6 rebounds. Stokes trying to carry it over from yesterday. Rivers the rebound and a travel call. Wow. Well, he got hit. Catching it coming to the floor is why they called it. And you're right, he may have gotten banged. But once again, uh, the ability to double. And this is where Hibbert usually makes a good decision. Too many guys dove to the rim. Too much congestion. Ended up bouncing it and kicking it away. Well, you really have to be strong with the ball in this game if you're Georgetown. Good faith. And Stokes has it spin out. Stokes was four out of eight from three yesterday. Missed his four shots of the game and finished the game 5 for 11 overall. It was a three-point barrage in the second half for going over the beat Syracuse yesterday. Went 8 out of 10 for as a team from beyond the arc in the second half. Traveling the call. Did you ever have to handle the ball that far on a regular basis? Yeah, but if I dribbled it, there was an immediate a little, sub. A little drop kick, huh? <laughs> a little concern. But it is interesting the confidence guys have in their big people to handle it that far from the hole. Well, he is very, very skilled. And he can put the ball on the deck. We've seen him catch it in the high post, turn, and drive it. Hibbert has turned it over three times already, and now a whistle for a hole on, on away Hibbert? from the ball. It's no. on Jeremiah oh. Rivers. His first and the team's third. You know, it's one interesting thing about Georgetown. They do turn it over at a high rate. In Big East play, they've averaged about 14 turnovers per game. And as few possessions as they have in a, in a game, that's a lot of turnovers. They can't afford to cough it up against Villanova. Shane Clark got bumped, got it back. Stokes, the freshman, stripped on a nice reach in by Patrick Ewing Jr. Nice try. Jeremiah Rivers, the miss. Austin Freeman, the freshman from Mitchellville, Maryland, out of DeMatha High School there to tip it in. That's why you run the floor, and he's an excellent offensive rebounder. Freeman's coming off one of his best performances of the year. 15 points a game high in their regular season ending win over Louisville. That was head-to-head -head for the regular season title Saturday in Washington. And Georgetown prevailed. Reynolds a three ball. What a and Nova's back within four. So what a screen by Drummond. Well, and it was a sprint out screen. Yeah. And that's too much for Roy Hibbert to get to and too quick. You've got to involve Hibbert in pick and roll situations when they're in man-to-man. -man because he is not good at stepping out. And Scotty Reynolds is going to be able to take advantage of it. 
it. Here you can see, watch this, essentially a sprint out screen. And a terrific job. Roy Hibbert very late in getting there. And if he does come there, then Patrick Ewing's got to help out. And that's going to leave somebody wide open in the corner. Well, Dwayne Anderson just called for his second foul for Villanova. Second team foul, so Anderson's gone to the bench. Bodies fly underneath without a whistle, and Jesse Sapp buries the three. How about Chris Wright getting some action here with great penetration and kick. What an addition he is come tournament time. Yeah, that is a major story. The freshman Chris Wright, McDonald's All-American last year, St. John's College prep in the D.C. area, has not played since late December with a foot injury. Missed the last 18 games to give him speed in the backcourt. Reynolds the miss. Hibbert rips down the rebound. And he went a distance for that. You like to see the big guy. That's the one knock you can have on him. His ability to move it. And Georgetown shooting the lights out. Sure are. Getting great opportunities with a dribble. The pinch and kick. And they're pushing the ball up the floor. Which they didn't do the last two times they played Villanova. They are really trying to get up and down the, the court. They are six out of seven from beyond the arc. The Villanova advanced yesterday because of their eight for ten in the second half from three. A nice hand hedge by Ewing. Uh, not a good look here by Scotty. He knows it too. Jay Wright really getting on Reynolds about making a jump stop. Tonight at 7 Eastern after our afternoon doubleheader on ESPN. It's the Big East Championship continuing with Pittsburgh taking on 13th ranked Louisville. And then at 9, Marquette takes on the 14th ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame with the player of the year, Luke Heron, Gody in the Big East. The coach of the year, Mike Bray. The Irish enjoyed the first round bye yesterday. Now what great reaction on that screen and roll. Here's the charge at the end of it. But they're in the right spot. You notice Georgetown, the kick to the opposite corner by Macklin. And very alert passing by this Georgetown team, as always. As long as they take care of the ball. You can't expect them to shoot it like they're shooting it in the first eight minutes of this game. But if they take care of the ball, they're such an efficient team. Uh, Jay on the other end, John, getting a little word in. But Jay talking to Scotty Reynolds. Sometimes you get a little too excited. It goes well one day. It takes a little time another. Corey Fisher has come in to replace Reynolds at the point. And a little hand check on Jeremiah Rivers. So he has accumulated two quick fouls off the bench. Georgetown, a good three-point shooting team during the year. Much better than good so far today. Plummers, Wallace, Sapp all contributing. And a 10-point lead for the regular season team. ESPN Films presents Black Magic. On the same night in 1966 that Texas Western became the first NCAA champion to start five black players, Perry Wallace and his Pearl High School teammates were breaking another barrier in Tennessee. This was a huge event in the state of Tennessee. We beat uh, Memphis Treadwell High School, winning the state championship in the first year that the championship was integrated. Black Magic debuts March 16th and 9 Eastern on ESPN. And the two-day, four-hour film tells the story of the injustice which characterized the civil rights movement in America as told through the lives of basketball players and coaches who attended historically black colleges and universities. You know, Sean, I went on a cruise. It was a Legends cruise, and obviously the question would be, why was I on it? You were still away? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> But Earl the Pearl was on it, and just an amazing individual, uh, personality, uh, love of the game, joy for life, uh, just incredible human being. Whistles away from the ball. Vernon Macklin, who just came in for Georgetown, got tangled up. <laughs> With Dante Cunningham, he got called for the foul. Stow away, why you, Cam and Edgar. <laughs> Did you just get that? <laughs> it, I'm a little slow in the morning. <laughs> Antonio Pena scores on the second try. He has four for Villanova. Redshirt freshman back in his hometown. He's from Brooklyn. Now, one thing about this pressure, you can open it up a little bit and help Georgetown. You don't want to let them get the quick hitter, and that time it worked. 
But in this, they have not yet started their office. First pass, 20 seconds on the clock. If they can keep doing this, it's less time in a half-court set that they have to guard Georgetown's Princeton offense. Uh, Pena with a nice show and recovery to Macklin. And now Chris Wright. And Wallace with a shot oh. clock running out makes an NBA and beyond three-pointer. This kid is so relaxed out there, knows the game, responds, makes big goals, and that's why they win close games. Such a smart player and takes nothing but good shots. You can probably count on one hand this year that Jonathan Wallace has taken a shot that was even questionable. Ooh, tough one there. Shane Clark way off on the rebound down to the sophomore, Vernon Macklin. Staff long with it. Macklin in pursuit, kept it alive, but batted it out of bounds. And even though he missed that three, that was a good shot. Georgetown really pushing the ball up the floor, and I think that's a good strategy for this team. And, and Sapp challenged the shot in the corner, which made it an errant toss. I mean, he played that sequence terrifically. Well, Villanova's in a familiar spot at the second media timeout yesterday. They trailed Syracuse 18-7. to Rallied to get within one at the half and then pulled away with the blitz of threes in the second half. One by 19. Got them right where they want them. Yep, they're down by 11 right now, 10-20 to go. First half. And you have to expect that Georgetown's not going to be able to keep up shooting the ball from three at this rate. I'll tell you, they're, they're playing great defense, though. That's uh, no question. Even if they stop shooting it well, yeah. they can hang their hat on the other end. They're the number one team in the country, Georgetown, in field goal percentage defense. Their opponent shooting just 36.4%. That would be the single-season Georgetown school record if it ends at that number. And that's nice that penetration there by the Wildcats, and Reggie Redding just into the ball game scored. And the difference there, Bill, just the jump stop. Yeah, he I, makes I, a jump stop and is able to make a play. If absolutely. you're going to go off one foot and leave your feet, you are going to turn it over against Georgetown or make a bad decision. Villanova a little bit more active that time as they brought the pressure on the Hoyas. Patrick Ewing. And the rebound to Shane Clark in traffic. A junior from Philadelphia. Oh, what a steal. Amazing to stay in bounds. Freeman was begging for the ball from the sap, but then missed the shot. Ewing got up a little bit too early, and Dante Cunningham wound up with the rebound. Boy, well, Hibbert gave it out to Ewing earlier, and I'd love to see him take it himself once in a while. No fear. That young man has zero fear. And he's seen getting... Reynolds go in at Hashim Fabik. And now he goes at Roy Hibbert at seven feet two. When he takes the ball in and comes to a two-footed jump stop, he is under control. He can let the defense clear and then find an opening. There he finds Redding for an easy basket, all because he was under control because of a jump stop. Hibbert's foul his first. They had charged him with one earlier, then upon review, they changed it. Yeah, they gave that earlier one to Dewan Summers. Ewing. There's that back screen at the, the back cut. And over the top, ready. Boy, what a hard cut by Jesse Sapp. They not only cut, they cut hard. They put a ton of pressure on your defense. With purpose. Reggie Redding called for the foul. He's trying to battle Hibbert on the low block, giving away about nine inches in that matchup. Ewing's gone out of the ball game. Freeman was shut off. The freshman right steps back and makes one. And it's a long two. Excuse me, that was Wallace who made it. I was going to understand your hand signal sooner or later. <laughs> I thought I was Yogi Berra. <laughs> Two, one. Every time lately, he's made great decisions. He's either gotten fouled or kicked it out, and they don't cover him. Reynolds missed the three. Wallace the rebound. You should be familiar with him. He's starting his 132nd consecutive game here today. Not all of them here today, but he has played in 132. Every game of his career has been a start for a guy who came 
to Georgetown as a walk-on. Originally thought he was heading to Princeton, and John Thompson III was the coach there. When JT3 came to Georgetown, Wallace came along, and it's been a wonderful marriage. Cunningham fouled. And Hibbert, too. The big fella will be limited. Two fouls on Hibbert. We'll see if he comes back onto the court after the media timeout. And we saw the Florida State Wake Forest score. The Seminoles with an early eight-point lead. The winner of that one will get North Carolina as the ACC championship gets underway. NC State, it's almost stunning to see that 12 seed. They were picked to finish third in the ACC in the preseason poll. Yeah, and didn't have a point guard. That was really the biggest issue, and having to bring in J.J. Hickson, an outstanding freshman, really, were some, there were some issues with that team. I thought they should have been a lot better, and uh, it was a really unfortunate finish for them. You know, I had the one game I thought they played great against Duke. Uh, you never thought you'd say they missed Hatcher, though, but you're right. Oh, they missed him yeah, a ton. And he really was sound for them, and big adjustment. And, you know, right now, Villanova's got to make a little bit of a run. You got Summers out, you got Hibbert out with the foul situation. They've got to get it going. I'm wondering if Reynolds might be a little fatigued, believe it or not. A little tired on his jump shots. That diagonal pass to Freeman is what's been breaking the pressure. They've got to start shading on that pass. After the free throws by Cunningham, Villanova is within eight. Trying to take advantage of Summers and Hibbert on the bench with two fouls apiece. And there's Jonathan Wallace showing that he's more than a three-point shooter. He has 16 already. And doing what he has to do, they they happen to have Summers on the floor, uh, but he knows it's time for him to step up. Not only a three, take it to the team with the blow by. It also looked like a charge. There was a lot of contact there, and you wonder sometimes if it were a bigger guy, if they call it, he's just too small for them to call it. Nice help. The Anderson shot was blocked by Saf. Wallace now off to Summers. They are looking to uptick it, aren't they? So he's playing Pretty with the pass. Fouls. Macklin looked like he might have been fouled by Cunningham, but it was called a clean block. And then Reggie Redding called for a reach in on Macklin. This Georgetown team does a great job of skip passing, throwing the ball from one side all the way to the other. And Jay, what that does for the postman is he can then dive to the ball side. And just a great read is from one side to the other, you got Macklin in the hands to seize that opportunity. Uh, we showed the second pass, but it was the first pass that made it, the skip pass that caused the defense to have to cover a lot of ground. And then you can really go against the green and make that post pass. And look who's inside up. Reynolds is playing a post guy. They've got to take advantage. It's now they get him out. Sapp guarded by Stokes. Freeman gave it back to Sapp. Sapp, Wallace, Ewing, Macklin, and Freeman for Georgetown. Five to shoot. Freeman in a tough spot. Blocked by Clark. Out of bounds. Last touch by Freeman, says Brian O'Connell. A pretty good stance. They confuse them with that matchup. And then they, on a dive, they'll follow you sometimes. They'll exchange sometimes. you got to slip it. It's not a surprise that Georgetown would be shooting for a high percentage. They're 48.3% as a team shooting the ball this year. One of the best in the country. Well, that's not a good judgment there. That's what he did earlier in the year, I thought. And it's a little bit wild. Villanova down by 10. Six minutes to go in the half. Anderson got a hand on Sapp pass, and then Stokes hit the floor to get it ahead to Reynolds. Another wild shot, rebounded by Ewing. And he's hurt, too, and he's temporarily. Nice pass! Oh, phenomenal! He got up for an offensive rebound early in the game, and Freeman getting back, and a whistle for Reynolds, who's cut after he hit the deck. Was that any good, Jay? What a beautiful pass by Freeman, and when you're bleeding like that, hard to imagine there was not enough contact for a foul. Well, also, I think you're hitting the floor, though. Sure, but he got knocked there. Jay Wright's hot. He's down talking to Ed Corbett as the medical staff tends to Scotty Reynolds. Of course, when you're bleeding, you have to come out of the game. You can't come back in until the bleeding is stopped. If he gets it on his uniform, he'll have to change the uniform as well. Now, no question about the toughness of this kid. Everybody giving Grant I don't see any foul whatsoever. I don't know. And just the end of it, I think that's where he I mean, hit him. You know, Macklin was on top of him at the end. Jeff Pierce, longtime trainer. 
course, Jake Nevin was a legendary trainer back in the early days and all the way through that championship. Broly had him on the bench, if you remember. So this kid is tough. Isn't it? That, 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 that is great. The presence of mind by Austin Freeman as a freshman to make that pass one-handed. And they're getting out and attacking. That's part of the reason. Able to get numbers. You miss it one end on a breakaway. With numbers, they're going to counter. He's got a chance for double figures, ten, uh, ten stitches. As you can see, they're having a hard time stopping the bleeding. That appears to be just the corner above his right eye. Tomorrow noon Eastern, ESPN2 has coverage of the first ACC quarterfinal as the winner of Wake Forest, Florida State will take on top-ranked North Carolina. And then at 2.30 Eastern time, it's a Big Ten quarterfinal. Ohio State versus 19th-ranked Michigan State. That's on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. No question. And then terrific maneuver on the defensive. How about that, Joe? Touch. Knowing, seeing, and being able to complete an extraordinary, just a spectacular pass. They're still trying to stop the bleeding. He's thinking, when can I get back in? Come on, guys. They don't play flying. much without him. He averages more than 32 minutes per game. See, Wallace bumped him there, Bill. Uh -huh. That's a foul. I don't think so, Jay. I do. Not That's at a all. foul. I mean, if I touched you like that, you'd cry? Well, I'd, I'd take you to the floor. That's different. <laughs> in the summer league, would you call out a foul? What about in the summer league? That, no foul on that That's a foul. Do you want me to break the tie? Yeah, stay out of it. <laughs> no, your stowaway line's still pretty good. I didn't think it was a foul either, if you want to know the truth. Ooh, I like you. You agree with yeah, you. I really appreciate the input. Oh, can you finally agree with the Shanty Irishman? Would have been the foul at the end of the game if you were trying to walk a tightrope on the sideline, though, huh? Oh, let it go. <laughs> Look nice at this. Back cut by Wallace from the freshman right. And then a blocked shot by Cunningham. Bodies fly everywhere. Villanova has the ball and gets the timeout. That's the way they have to play. Get a little down and dirty. Pursue it. Well, history is on Georgetown's side in this one. We mentioned they've never lost to Villanova in the Big East Tournament, 4-0 all-time. And when the Georgetown Hoyas have been the top seed in the Big East Tournament, they've never lost. They are 12-0 when they've been the number one seed. In all, they've won seven Big East Tournament championships, including last year, their first Big East Tournament title since 1989. A lot of those championships came early. They won six of the first ten under the legendary John Thompson Jr. Also four times the runner-up, then back hoisting the trophy last year. And John Thompson III has done something that his dad did not do. He's won back-to-back -back regular season Big East championships. He was asked about that after the win against Louisville in the regular season finale Saturday. And John Thompson Jr., the dad, now as we know a media member, growled a bit and said, when are you going to stop being compared to your ancient dad and Pete Carrill? When will they start comparing you to your peers? Because you're doing pretty well relative to your peers as well. Uh, he's ob obviously a proud father. We all saw him in the lobby nice and early getting ready for this game. And yeah, you know, he stands on his own, John the Third. Let's face it, I mean, his accomplishments this early in his career it's just extraordinary. And despite the fact that John Thompson III had a good resume at Princeton, there were many who raised the question of nepotism when he was selected to be the head coach four seasons ago. And I think he has quickly demonstrated he's more than up to the job. Took them to the NIT quarterfinals in his first season. The Sweet 16 two seasons ago. The final four last year. So I guess the only thing next is to win the whole thing this year. Well, he's a very talented kid on his own merits. And it was a great decision for them. And, and, he's, just, and he's got a great demeanor. Mm -hmm. Especially with the, the kids. Just a great demeanor. Let's see if Villanova can start getting after it a little bit. The extra pass to the... Uh, that's a great look on the baseline. That is tough to stop. Have they scored a basket without an assist? Well, I, I would doubt it. 
But he can't collapse the defense quick enough to cover that baseline pass. They have 12 field goals and 10 assists, to answer your question, Jay. Pena denied under the rim. Georgetown running out with a 12-point lead. The freshman right was alone, and he spins one in. He scored 2,580 points in high school. He's a prolific scorer, the first three-time All-Metropolitan player in the D.C. area since Adrian Dantley back in the early 1970s. You think about all the great players in the D.C. area, that's Wright's resume. And, and the philosophy that's helping him on that shot is pushing. Technical, go down the, technical foul on Patrick Ewing for throwing the ball in the air after the call. And uh, yeah, John Cowell saying you can't do that. But Wright getting down the floor, getting that opportunity basket, I think that's what's gotten them the lead against Villanova. Not afraid to take it. a little nylon, and boy, is it good to be back. The feet are solid, the stroke is prettier. Back to the garden, guys. All right, John, thank you. Just before the break, a personal foul was called on Jonathan Wallace and then a technical foul on Patrick Ewing Jr. He threw the ball straight up in the air. After the whistle sounded, he got teed up. So a chance for Villanova to cut into its 15-point deficit. And coming out of the timeout, Patrick Ewing sought out the officials, went over seemingly to apologize to John Cal and Brian O'Connell, shook their hands and walked away. You know, very classy program. We, we saw them coming out of the hotel this morning. The players always very well dressed on their way to a game in a jacket and tie. They, they, they conduct themselves the right way and have for a long time. Impeccable. Very cordial. Impeccable. And, and I thought, we, we talked about this off air, after this Georgetown program lost to Memphis, I was down at that game. The way they walked off the floor was so classy and dignified. I, I might have been more impressed with Georgetown in defeat than any victory I've seen. They're just a really impressive program with the way they conduct themselves. You know, Patrick Ewing Jr. didn't mean anything by that. Wilson hasn't attempted a free throw yet. Changes a lot of the line to take them 87 and a half percent for the year, so that makes it a 13-point game. And now Corey Fisher will go to the line. He's 71 percent for the year. Freshman out of the Bronx who played. His high school ball at St. Patrick's in New Jersey, the same school that sent Mike Nardi on to Villanova. He's a keeper, this kid. He's going to have a great next year. Getting his feet wet, putting Scotty at the point, letting him play off the ball has really helped him coming down the stretch. And he's going to be a New Jersey high school player of the year last year, averaging nine and a half this year as a freshman. Reynolds back in. They've bandaged the cut above his right eye. Fisher talking about going to be a good player, but remember the last time these two teams played, he went one of 16 from the field, including 0 of 6 from three-point range. Yeah, he was struggling and didn't really do different things uh, to help the team at that point, but that's part of growing up. Yeah, he did the same thing. He kept shooting and he kept yeah. missing. Yep. Right. Throws up an air ball. But Ewing got it back with a shot clock reset, and it shouldn't have, and the officials spot that. Well, they're going to address it. Yeah, that was an ugly game, the first meeting. Had the controversial ending, which kind of overwhelmed the fact that it was a good old-fashioned Big East rock fight. Villanova shot 24.6% in that game. Of course, that number included Fisher's 1 for 16. Villanova was just 3 out of 23 from 3 in that game for 13%. So given all that and the turnovers, they were lucky they were in the game at the end. Uh, the one thing about Jay is we've seen all year long, well, through his career, he hangs tough with his kids. I mean, they really respond to directions and competitiveness. Very disappointed in the outfit today, fellas. How, how do you get your guys to play tough when you wear a pink shirt? Pink shirt. With the, the, it's not that. He wore the same shoes. <laughs> Two days in a row? That's the, it's just uh, well, why should Why should more alligators die? So... <laughs> He can be shod properly. Yeah, trying to get the time right here. It and should be at about 13, right. it looked like, the shot clock. Yeah, they got it straight. I mean, from our angle, it didn't even come close to the rim. No. I think they just wanted the time, don't you? And everybody's got to be alert on both ends. This is a nice trap situation late. There's Macklin. The back cut 
to right. Oh, and trouble handling the pass. Looked like it wasn't going to be completed, but they got bailed out by the foul call against Anderson. And that is a huge call now because it's the third on Anderson, who really has become behind Scotty Reynolds as valuable as any player on their team. And, and you know, he did the right thing. He just got hooked up with his body. I mean, great read to help out on the dive. <laughs> Right, Freeman, now Macklin. That's a tough foul because now you got to guard for a long stretch again if mm -hmm. they decide to air it out. Trap is open. And that's another three for Georgetown. And the third three of the ball game for Jesse Sapp, who's much improved in that area this year. He's at 39% for the year entering today. Last season and the year before, his first two years combined, 27% from three. Just dribble, drive, and find. I mean, they pinch. Two on one and kick. And you're not going to find a better glue guy than Jesse Zapp. He's just a great competitor. Nice pump. Ooh, that's not a foul getting kicked. <laughs> Uh, well, right. can you say he's a sap guy? I mean, sap is sticky like glue. Yeah, you're yeah, exactly. Glue guy. I'm glad you picked up on them all together. You forget what a good passer he is. I mean, he gets over three a game, but their ability to turn the corner and create decisions defensively is what has really hurt Villanova. They may be overhelping, basically, or they at least stay a little bit closer. Uh, hedge off. Make them make them finish difficult twos instead of leaving them open threes. And I think that's an adjustment you'll see Villanova make at halftime. If they can cut into this lead in the last two minutes, 30 seconds, and get it to around 10 or just under 10, I think that would be a good, would awfully be good news for uh, for Villanova. Yeah, because they took a lot of early hits and efficient shooting by the Hoyers. Villanova staying in the game at the free throw line. 13 of their 25 points from the strike. That was really the case in the regular season meeting. We mentioned how poorly they shot the ball from the field, but they made 22 out of 27 from the line. So in that game, 22 of their 53 points were from the strike. And Villanova must have an excellent cut man to get uh, Scotty Reynolds back oh. in, looking so good in such a short period of time. They had total team coverage over there, like many newsrooms on TV around the country. Coverage you can count on. My favorite slogan in TV. <laughs> so what's the option? Coverage that's you really can't shaky, count on. but we're just going to throw it out there. Two Stokes. minutes to go in the half. Stokes with a nice job. It's late in the clock now. That's and a great a three trip. And goal for Sapp, rebounded by Reynolds, who's also a decent rebounder from his guard position. The jump stop again that Jay Wright wanted, and Antonio Pena capitalizes. Well, they are cutting very well for Scotty. Horton, one minute, 30 seconds right now for Villanova. They can get a stop, a score, and another stop. The Wildcats are going to be in pretty good shape going into halftime, given how well Georgetown has played and how well they've shot. And Villanova's field goal, it's first in eight minutes and 20 seconds. It gets them back within 10. More action from the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal tonight, 7 o'clock. The Pittsburgh Panthers taking on 13th ranked Louisville. And then at 9, Marquette and Notre Dame. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Of course, three out of those four teams ranked in the top 25. Pittsburgh was earlier in the year before they got negatively impacted by some injuries. Pittsburgh defeated Cincinnati last night. And Marquette over Seton Hall behind 21-9 and nine from Jarrell McNeil. Well, it's hard to believe that Louisville is ranked 13th in the country. They're better now, I think. And you don't want to play them the way they guard, let me tell you. And the way they have played offensively. David Padgett, what did he play, 450 minutes this year? And then nobody thought he would come back this year. Yeah, exactly. He's first team all Big East. It's the uh, Georgetown-Louisville game. They did not shoot well. One of the few games coming down the stretch. Largest lead for Georgetown was 15. They're ahead by 10 now as we approach halftime. Freeman to Wallace with Rivers, Macklin, and Sapp. Essentially four guards on the floor right now for Georgetown. This zone has been pretty effective. So the one guy you don't want to leave, and he just made himself available. J.W. Wallace a perfect 7 for 7 from the floor here in the first half. 
What He's a, made five threes. What a performance by Jonathan Wallace. And he hasn't changed his demeanor one bit. A nice defensive try by Freeman. Now he gets two involved. Always under control. Jonathan Wallace sets his feet. Looks at the rim. Again, that shoots, overhelp. Yeah, shoots that rainbow. And again, the overhelp, too. Yeah. To, you know, jam In a zone. Away. Yeah. You don't have to go that deep. You have to have an awareness for the best shooters on the floor. And there's no question that Jonathan Wallace is among the best shooters in the country. And especially right now in this game. Banging down threes left and right over his last seven. He's had shooting 50% from three. It's nice to know that a lawyer someday... Uh, could play basketball as well. <laughs> He's an English major. He's already been accepted into the Georgetown School of Law. We told the story before that high arcing jump shot comes from his youth when his dad used to have him shoot jump shots over a broomstick that was held right in front of him by his mom. Mm. So Jeff Green's from Harvest, Alabama. And Jeff Green said last year, I asked, is he afraid of anything? He said, yeah, he's afraid of the subway. <laughs> <laughs> he confirmed that for me. He's afraid of the subway. Yeah, but he said a couple of the city switchers he brought down to the farm in Harvest, Alabama were afraid of the animals. They're afraid of the cows. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tip for Ted. Well, he's made five threes in his four-year career. His single game high is six threes. That was earlier this season at Syracuse when he went six out of seven in the loss to the Orange and scored a career high 26 points. Well, he finally missed one with the shot clock running out. 15 seconds for Villanova as Reynolds tracked down a dribble that got away and nearly did again with sap attacking. Look at this harassing deep. Nice post. And nice execution inside by Villanova. Pena got it back from Clark, and Antonio Pena will go to the free throw line with three seconds left in the half. How good was Georgetown's defense, though? I know they fouled at the end, but just harassing, being bigger, taking away vision, taking away passing lanes, and when you pound it, it's so predictable. People can cheat a little more, get away from their guy, because you don't have very good vision. Well, knocking it away, very important. That's when Austin Freeman came up, and... Really solid job defensively. They, they've been moving their feet very effectively, and everybody's been alert. I've been really impressed with the way Georgetown's been pushing the ball up the floor. They've put a lot of pressure on Villanova's transition defense. And I think the Louisville game helped them because they didn't do it quite as well. Taking advantage. Patrick Ewing will come back in. Play defense here in the last three seconds. Freeman went out. Jay Wright has Kasim Drummond back on the floor. Six feet ten. And Villanova needs to press up here so you can't get a long outlet. And they give the Rivers the heave at the half. And the way they shot from beyond the arc, you expected that one to go in too. 19 points in the first half for Jonathan Wallace. Perfect five for five beyond the arc. He's doubled his season average in one half of play. Georgetown over Villanova, 40 to 29 at the break. Now let's send you back to the studio. Here's John Saunders and Hubert Davis with the Cisco Halftime Report. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Georgetown. Need to survive. That's what this show's about. You want reality TV? Well, here it is. You want reality TV? Well, here it is. You want reality TV? Well, here it is. Once the whistle blows, tip off, no fear exists. Oh, yes. You want reality TV? Well, here it is. You want reality TV? Well, here it is. Big East on ESPN, that's where it lives. Then we welcome you back to New York City in the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods continues with the Big East Championship brought to you by Aero Postal. First of four quarterfinal round games here today. The number one seed, regular season Big East champ Georgetown leading Villanova 40-29. to Welcome back to the Garden, Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, and Bill Raftery. The season high for Georgetown in three-point field goals in a game is 12. That was against Fordham back in December. They had 10 in the first half today. Just on fire and 10 of their 15 field goals have been threes. They've missed 13 shots on the game. They've gotten six of those back on offensive rebounds. It's just been a very efficient game for Georgetown. They've been knocking the bottom out. The only mistake is the eight turnovers in Villanova's offense right on that free throw line. I mean, 18 attempts. Uh, they've got to play better defense, I think. Get in the lane, make those good decisions that Scotty did early in the half. The senior Jonathan Wallace leading the way in that first half for the Hoyas, seven out of eight from the floor. 
Five out of five from the three-point line for 19 points, only seven more to get to his career high of 26 earlier this year against Syracuse. It'll be Villanova's ball to begin the second half. And really the only downside for Georgetown in the first half, not only the free throws, but they coughed it up eight times. Mm -hmm. And if they can limit their turnovers the way they've shot it and as efficient as they've been on offense, it's a great recipe for winning. And I just love the way they play defense. And it's very important you come out strong if you're the catch. Scotty Reynolds, who hit the deck in the first half and was bleeding from above his right eye, had it bandaged as he was out of the game for a few minutes. Still wound up playing more than 16 minutes in the first half. Uh, Georgetown on offense for the first time. Freeman to Sapp out there with Summers, Hibbert, and the Red Hot Wallace. Now you wonder about Georgetown backdooring you to death if you're so worried about getting out to a three-point shooter that you're going to go out too far. Look at this. That's what they should do automatically. Oh, my goodness. Hibbert sealed Reynolds, and they still weren't able to finish. Nice shot by Anderson to get back and try to put some pressure on that shot. Well, they really are helping beautifully, cutting off dribbling lanes. I think that Villanova does a great job of. When they drive, they oftentimes look right behind them for an open shooter. Stokes missed a three. He hasn't been able to carry it over from yesterday to today. Now one for four from beyond the arc, but he'll keep firing along with that one. Hibbert with a silly foul. Yeah. And he was holding Dwayne Anderson as Anderson went in pursuit of the ball. And that's three fouls now on the senior Roy Hibbert. And here's the Guinness first half stats. As you guys were mentioning, one number that jumps off the page. Villanova staying in the game with 15 out of 18 from the line while Georgetown did not attempt a free throw. Of course, when you're shooting threes and making them, you don't get fouled a lot. And Hibbert, of course, that time on the high side, not, does not want to foul again. A great entry pass, good location. And the pass was away from the defense, not just to the offense, but away from the defense. Very well done by Villanova. And Sean, how about 13 assists on 15 baskets for Georgetown? That's amazing. Sapp too strong with the leaner. Reynolds looks to push. Villanova has numbers. Two minutes into the second half. They're down by nine. They're down by six. Wayne Anderson the basket. Reynolds with great recognition too. Push, waited for the trailer, and they look for the toes on the line. A nice job by Pena to run the floor and take the defense with him. And a timeout called by John Thompson the third. The Hoy is led by 15 in the first half. That advantage is now six. 17.45 to play. We're in the second half here at Madison Square Garden, day two of the Big East Championship. Well, the Villanova fans now fully engaged as their team is starting to find a bit of a rhythm on the comeback trail as we go inside the play here early in the second half. Always important, Sean, for a big guy to run the floor. When he does, that opens up things for others, especially on the perimeter. You see off the missed shot, Antonio Pena is going to run the floor. If we can stop it right here, here is Pena. He is going to run the floor, and when he does, that's going to open some things up. You watch DeJuan Summers, he's going to have to make a decision. Decision, and that is going to leave somebody wide open, and that is going to be Dwayne Anderson. He runs the floor. Summers has to go with him. Anderson wide open. It is three instead of two. Run the floor. You'll get your teammates open. Well, it figured that this one would tighten up. As we mentioned earlier, the last four meetings between these two schools have been decided by five points or less, and three of those four came down to the final offensive possession, including the controversial regular season meeting this year and both regular season matchups last season. Summer stepped on the end line, and the Hoyas turn it over again. Uh, what a nice job by Villanova defensively. They're in America's play to pin down on Wallace. Great reaction. Of course, it was a tale of two halves yesterday for Villanova. They exploded from the three-point line to score 55 points in the second half. 
The third time this year they've scored more than 50 after intermission. They're capable of catching fire. And that would have helped their cause considerably. Stokes just can't heat it up today. Boy, what a great checkout by Freeman on that rebound. Sapp hesitated for a moment at the line. Stokes snatched the rebound. The freshman from Bayonne, New Jersey, out of St. Benedict, where he played for Danny Hurley. Good kick. And Reynolds is wide open for three. And Stokes was very patient. Reynolds was open early. It would have been intercepted if he went cross court. Well, the ball is heading out of bounds, and it hit the official at Corbett. Which is okay if he's inbound, Sean. Yes, and he was. Reynolds bumped right in front of us. Anderson, a baseline drive, gets stuck in the air and turned it over. And the Villanova bench thought Anderson was hit. This is the kind of game Villanova needs. A rough, ragged, nice post entry. They've got the push off wow. number four. And there seemed to be little doubt about it from here. Hibbert clearly gave the defender a shove as he tried to establish position on the low block. And that is the fourth foul on Roy Hibbert, the first team all Big East center. When you become more frenetic, it throws people ajar. And right there, Hibbert somewhat frustrated on the entry pass on the discard. Unable to get on track, but I'll tell you, Jay, this is dangerous. Now it's a small yeah. ball game. The matchups are a little bit better for Georgetown. Boy, that is a tough call. Hibbert trying to walk a smaller man up the lane just put a little bit too much into it. And if you're a big guy, you know that feeling. I mean, you give a little bump, all of a sudden the whistle blows. How about the entry? Oh. And you missed the jog. Anderson, the photo, count it. How about the fight in this Villanova team? The emotion. They stoked the fire and started to attack a little bit, not stepping back. Tough one. Very tough on there. Yeah, I'm not sure about that yeah. one. And then the other end. You be scrappy. You get rewarded. Step to the line, Mr. Anderson. Definition available on ESPN HD presented by Olivia. It's a much brighter picture for Villanova than it was moments ago. They've outscored the Hoyas 10 zip here in the second half. And Roy Hibbert, Georgetown's leading scorer and rebounder for the season, has just picked up his fourth foul. His first foul on a long rebound, just grabbing Dwayne Anderson. No question that was a foul. Not quite as aggressive in guarding Dante Cunningham, maybe as a result of picking up his third. And then his fourth foul, frankly, I just didn't agree with. I, I mean, agree with you totally on that one. That's just big man play. Got to be able to see it. Yeah, and Antonio Pena put a little bit extra into it, and the official fell for it. No points, three rebounds, four fouls in 14-plus minutes for Roy Hibbert who averages 13 and a half points per game and 6.4 rebounds. Anderson's free throw ties the game for Villanova. The Wildcats have never led in the game. They trailed by 15 at 34 to 19 with just under four minutes to go in the first half. And here's the danger. Georgetown starts slowing the pace down, getting four deep into the shot clock. It's going to really injure them. And the problem is now they've got no post threat to throw the ball into. You don't have a, a Hibbert in there that you can throw it into, get score, and a score get fouled. But other guys slip in, and that's what helps them. Well, now they can spread it a little bit more, maybe get some back doors. And they do let Ewing, the nice little screen by Ewing. This kid can shoot. Sound of body. Great stroke. How about Chris Wright, the highly touted freshman, McDonald's All-American, played in the first 11 games of the year and was an important component. Averaged 18 minutes, scored six points a game, but hurt his foot. Has not played since late December. And his three is answered by Dwayne Anderson. Isn't it amazing how he has surfaced? We have got ourselves a ball game. This is a pretty darn good rivalry. No one talks too much about it. Well, they're meeting in the national championship game of 85. Yeah. Wasn't a bad game. No, no, but I mean, it's, you talk about Carolina Duke a lot. I mean, this mm -hmm. thing in this league, a big-time event. That was the last time Villanova beat Georgetown in the postseason, Jay Billis tells me. Back in 1985, of course, we mentioned earlier, Villanova 0-4 all-time against Georgetown in the Big East Tournament. And we want to congratulate our partner, Jay Billis, who was just announced this morning 
that Jay is one of the nominees for the National Emmy for Studio Analysis. Wow. It was uh, it was praise. a sympathy. It was a sympathy vote. They know I've got to deal with you guys every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe he'll be able to get a new suit for that event. <laughs> well, congratulations. And it is well Thank deserved you. for all the fun we have at your expense. You know how much we admire you personally and professionally. And this is always a sad day for me because uh, this will be our last day working together this I season. I it's don't consider it a sad day, quite frankly. <laughs> it's your last opportunity to pick up a check as well. Thanks for that $4 <laughs> cab ride over. That was nice of you. I got the cab ride speech? to get the dinner. That's how it works in New York City. <laughs> Do you have your speech prepared? Speech for what? Your Emmy. Oh, I'm just going to congratulate Chris Collinsworth as he goes up. <laughs> oh, offense. Ooh, yeah. Pena. A nice play. But Ewing really shakes it up. Once in a while, he'll jar you and do some things that maybe are perplexing, maybe a bad pass on occasion or a quick shot. But he brings a motion to the floor. Foul on Antonio Pena, his second. Villanova's third here in the second half. Tied at 43, nearing 14 minutes to go with Hibbert on the bench with four fouls. Georgetown playing small, three guards on the floor. And they can shoot split. on the perimeter, too. And a good split of that trap by Wright to get out of trouble. Nice pass. Wright looks like an experienced veteran, not a guy who's missed. Oh, Most of his no, freshman no, no. year, they wave it off. John Cal said Patrick Ewing interfered with it in the cylinder. And he was right on top of it, no question about it. That almost had a chance to go in on its own. Well, that was a shot. Yeah. It was it not a pass, it was a shot. Look at this. Maybe not. <laughs> no, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about this kid? If he has this runner to go with that ability deep, he will be a tough guy to contend with. You don't think he wants to go to law school instead? <laughs> Cunningham slapped on the arm. Ewing protest, but we could hear that one over here. Now, Bill, I don't think any of us believe the officiating has been skewed one way or the other, but when you're a coach, we see and hear this all the time. One, your team hasn't shot a free throw. The other team has shot 18. Oh, yeah. We hear coaches say all the time, hey, wait a minute, refs, the, you know, the fouls are 7-1. to one. They're 7-1. to one. Well, maybe one team committed seven fouls and the other team won. But I, I would agree with you this game. Psychologically, does that wear on the team? Oh, I, I think it wears on the coach. Mm -hmm. he, he knows the count. Come on, get us even. But when you analyze this game, the ability to dribble and kick is what Georgetown has done. No post presence. Uh, Hibbert has not been a contributor. So they're not getting in those positions. And Villanova is initiating contact and being more aggressive. Yeah, but Georgetown's not attacking the basket. They're attacking off the dribble, but it's to kick it to open shooters. And Villanova's taken its first lead. They've shot 21 free throws now. And Georgetown has still not been to the line. Summers didn't get the bounce off the rim. Villanova chance to expand its first lead. He lost, lost the shoe. shoe. He lost the shoe. Why it's not? Anderson, the shoeless wonder. Pena. And he's, he can't get it back on on defense. Oh, John oh, Cowley wanted to go get it, and John <laughs> Cowley official threw the shoe off the court. He's looking at him going, what'd you do with my shoe? That should be a technical. Shoe tossing. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Anderson ran back to pick up his shoe, which was at about the three-point arc. And John Cal, the official, picked it up and fired it across the baseline to get it off the court. <laughs> Shoeless Dwayne. Oh, that is great. It reminds me of Shoes Huffman from 1979 on Michigan State. Well, the rebound caused the problem for him. But look, when you're a shooter, why not? Hey, it's in the scouting report. When he has only one shoe on, let him shoot the open three. <laughs> That's what makes them. Excellent footwork by Dwayne Anderson. Oh. You know, Clark actually stepped on his heel on the rebound, and that started it. But how about John Cal? He wasn't going to trip over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the first Georgetown free throw of the game from Dewan Summers. Just when you think you've seen it all. Uh, just keep hanging in. Well, Jay Wright, irate that Anderson can't shoot with one shoe on, has him out of the game. He's going to have to have a drill next year. Jay's just happy he didn't lose a shoe. Those things have to be worth a grand apiece. Oh, they're like gondolas. Yeah, Bill had those shoes. He wore them two days in a row, too. So he's chiding Jay Wright, one of the most stylish coaches in the country, for wearing the same shoes two days in a row. Hey, they're lucky. He beat Syracuse with those shoes on yesterday. They weren't lucky for that alligator. Stokes. Nice adjustment, huh? He can't Numbers. get a bounce today. Ewing with Wright. Back to Ewing and the foul. <laughs> Uh, Cunningham just trying to hustle. 
Boy, Patrick Ewing, we mentioned earlier the emotion he brings to this basketball team. A little fancy with the underhand dish here, but Jay, hold on. Leave the chandeliers, Patrick. I'll tell you what, Bill. If I had a second round selection in this year's draft, Patrick Ewing would be on my list. I think this young man is an NBA basketball player. He can do so many things, long arms, a terrific defender, great team guy, good skills. I mean, Ronaldo Bachman out of South Carolina got drafted by the Knicks in the first round. And I think Patrick Ewing's better. And the one word that they will write on their stat sheet, their scouting sheet, energy. You turn to the bench, you put him in, he's going to provide a lift. Little 2-3 zone now by Georgetown. Well, they're wide open in the middle in this zone. Now they're going to follow through, though, Jay. Throw you off a little in a match. Don't leave this kid alone. Riley gets one to go. That's reminiscent of yesterday. Corey Stokes from the NBA line. His second three today. He has eight points. Well, just a simple cut. Drag the open area. Nice pitch. And Sapp counted. Woo. Patrick again. Off the dribble, huh? Yeah, that takes some guts to complete that pass. And the defense was in the back, Jay, too, prepared. What a skilled basketball team. One dribble, the bang. Nice little pocket pass. And the defender right Pretty underneath good. the basket. I, I like that call. Pretty good level of play, too. Uh, that is great concentration on the delivery by Sapp. First foul on Shane Clark, the sixth team foul, so the next one to put Villanova over the limit. That kid is nails. Yes, he is. Sapp puts them ahead again. Back and forth they go with 12 minutes remaining in this first of four Big East quarterfinal games today. And Reynolds lost it out of bounds off his hip. Well, it was a sluggish first half, not a tremendous amount of action. That has been far from the case here in the second half. A one-point game, the regular season champs on top. Back to Sean, Bill, and Jay. All right, John, thank you. This has developed into a tight one. One-point lead for Georgetown nearly midway through the second half as we go inside the play. Well, Jay, if you think you've got a matchup, match this, baby. We'll give a little circle here, let us know where the cutter is, let us know where the replacement man is, and then we're going to go to your favorite little tool. Whole front coming in, and how about just slide to the open area? This is just gorgeous basketball. Uh, not the best communication, and stoking it in rare form in the garden. Corey has been on fire locally. Thanks, hey. this. Thank you, Willard Scott. The warm front <laughs> heading in. To you're, borrow your line. You're like the little kid with the new toy at Christmas with that <laughs> thing, but thank goodness because. You know, you hopefully your lines are thin, your arrows are thin. Oh, not very best. impressive, huh? I, not you were not nominated in the best no. telestration arrows. <laughs> Go ahead and draw one on the screen just for old time's sake. Mike Fratella does not have to worry about my oh, arrows. So, you know, you're using the weapon now. We wanted the old one, just the a Bill Raftery approach. There, there you go. Not sure what that was. We got a good one now. Sap. Pivot still on the bench if you're just joining us. He's on the bench with four fouls. And watch Ewing rebound if Reynolds stays on him. Summers pulls it out. They're down to 10 to shoot. 11 and a half remaining. Regulation time. Georgetown the ball in a one-point lead. And Ewing. Now you made the comparison to Ronaldo Bachman, mm -hmm. saying you know the Knicks drafted him and you think Ewing's better. Right. Not to argue with a Emmy nominated studio analyst. There we go. Oh, his comment? Ronaldo Bachman was one of the most widely panned first round picks in the history of the NBA draft. Because he was taken in the first round. Mm -hmm. that, that's the point. If Ronaldo Bachman was taken in the second round, it would have been a good pick. Yeah, you don't you don't burn a first round pick on, on a player like that, in my judgment. No. Have you and Isaiah dined lately? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think Isaiah is quite as bad as other people think he is. <laughs> Now you haven't been out in New York lately. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been the last three or four days? Oh my God! You know, get the pillow over his head. Hand check fouled on Macklin. That's his third tonight. <laughs> Seven Eastern time right here on ESPN. The Big East Championship presented by Arrow Postal continues. Pittsburgh and Louisville, and then at nine Eastern time, Marquette and Notre Dame.
Marquette and Notre Dame played twice in the regular season. They split. They were two memorable games. An interesting matchup. Both of them should be appealing tonight from the Garden. Now still with the junk D. Macklin trying to point out in the back. Cutting Daddy Reynolds on the bench for a moment, a rear breather, so it's Corey Fisher, the freshman, running the show right now. And Cunningham's a good option in the middle. Get it to him. I Let him they, make a play. I think they're going to have somebody hide the baseline, Jay, and then that middle. They haven't done that. And Fisher running the show turned it over. Wouldn't think that Jay Wright would want to play for too long without Scotty Reynolds. He might be getting a little more medical attention over there for that cut above Thank the you. eye. Meanwhile, it's Sapp burying another three. Just their second three ball of the second half after the Hoyas made ten in the first half. For such a solid contributor. Back to man-to-man -to -man now for Georgetown. Oh, not good here. Got to stop and reverse out of it and pass the ball. Bill, if you were Jay Wright, would you use the timeout to get more time to get Reynolds fixed up and get him back in the game? I mean, this is crunch time. Well, you know, it's back-to-back. -back. I mean, we got plenty of time to... I don't think it's an emergency situation. Only four. Now, maybe. <laughs> uh, nice coaching, Sean. Why did you not get nominated for an Emmy with that analysis? <laughs> Jay Wright does call a timeout after the drop-in by Summers. Now with no Hibbert, uh, that ability to cut. And how about the limping and the shoeless wonders? <laughs> well, Scotty Reynolds hit the deck and wound up with a cut that was bleeding profusely above his right eye. Spent some time over on the bench getting patched up. Looked like they had it stopped, but apparently it's either started bleeding again or he's not comfortable. As you can see, that cut is still trickling blood down the side of his face. He may, he may have gotten brushed again, huh? That is deep. There's so much pressure on the trainers in a situation like this. I mean, every second could be critical. And Jay, in a couple of seconds, will be asking Jeff Pierce, what's going on? Can we get him back in there? Well, the problem is you've got a freshman in Corey Fisher that's being made to make all these decisions against changing defenses, man, matchup. Now, this kid has great talent, though, and you're right, though. It's part of learning how to play in these situations. Cunningham, Fisher, Reynolds stand in at the moment, an air ball. Anderson had it swatted away, and it was saved along the end line by Wallace. Who nice. else, huh? Nice play by Vernon Macklin. And now Georgetown running a little clock. Macklin to Wallace. Sapp, Summers, Dan Freeman. This is Sapp for three more. And they help too much again. When you're not needed, you stay on your man. And Georgetown able to capitalize. What a clinic. Looks good when you make it, doesn't it? Oh. Anderson fouled as he tried to get out of the lane. John Thompson, the third irate, he pounded the scorer's table after that whistle sounded. Now part of the problem, Jay, is they get back into the See all the help in there? You don't have to get down in there. And nothing going on. Ball's on the wing. You position yourself. Denial between the ball and your man. The 13 threes, a season high for Georgetown. They had 12 in the game against Fordham in late December. A ready Stokes. shot rolled off. Redding was wide open on that drive by Stokes. Jump stop, kick it out, wide open shot. A lot of fluidity without Hibbert in the game. You notice that? Like situate, not a good pass, but wide open opportunity. Now the Cats get an easy one with Reynolds on the bench. Antonio Pena, the run out on the break. He has 12. Well, he has really shown hustle up and down the floor. Nearing eight minutes to go. There'll be another timeout on the first whistle under eight. They are still catching up Scotty Reynolds. He can't get far behind this team. He's no use clock. Summers. And there's the 14 3. Get it in the lane. Collapse the blue shirts. And Summers kicked it out to yep. Freeman. Well, Jay Wright is irate that a 
charge was not called on Summers for driving in and taking one of his men down who set up for the charge. I'll tell you, how prepared are the shooters for Georgetown? I mean, they're stepping into shots. The takeaway by Anderson, and he's fouled. Well, did they hang tough with that trap? Generally, you release and get back. The shot by Freeman off the drive. And then Villanova, as they have all game long, scratching and clawing back. Dwayne Anderson trying to complete the three-point ten. All right, John, thank you here. It is Georgetown by eight. Scotty Reynolds for Villanova, their leading scorer, went to the bench. And the cut reopened with 11.09 remaining. It was a 51-50 game then, so in the 337 that he's been out of the game, Georgetown has outscored Villanova 11-4. to And Shavon, we have a moment. Whitey Rigsby he does radio, former captain of Villanova. Uh, a lot of the troops are watching this game in Iraq, and they want to say hello, especially to Jason Pacheco. So God bless them, and thank them. Thank you. Hua. Anderson made the free throw, then one out. Reynolds still not on the court for Villanova. Seven-point Georgetown lead. They played much of this half without Roy Hibbert, the first-team All-Big East center. 2-3 zone now. Got a shade to Chris Wright and especially to Jonathan Wallace. It should open. Opportunities underneath. The freshman Wright playing today for the first time in 18 games. Out with a foot injury since late December. So they are really moving the ball beautifully. Look at this opening because of cross-court look. And Wallace an NBA distance three and the rebound in traffic for Antonio Pena. Under seven minutes to go. Clark missed the spinner. Interesting, neither Fisher nor Reynolds on the floor no, right no. now. It must be serious if Scotty's not in. Let's see, Jay's turning to the bench. Going Anderson. Playing without what you would consider a true point guard. Wallace for Summers, out there with Wright, Ewing, and Freeman for Coach John Thompson the third. Tough step back, oh. and that's three more for oh. number three, Dewan Summers. Oh. Their 15th three of the game. Boy, that's cool hand, huh? If My you, goodness, step back. If you if you shot this well in warmups, you'd be happy. <laughs> that's not the shot I, I believe I'm not designed to take. Stokes trying to answer short. And it caroms around the Wallace. As we mentioned, it's already a season high in threes. And the Georgetown record all time for three-point field goals made in the game is 16. Summers bidding to match that. He missed. That was at James Madison in 2006 and against Davidson in 2004. 16 threes in each of those games for the Hoyas and a foul on the drive. Scotty Reynolds is now at the table getting ready to check back in. Out of the game for about five and a half minutes. He'll come in between free throws, and there's the coach, Hall of Famer. Jim Calhoun. Doesn't have an Emmy, though. <laughs> what is this, Jay? Yeah, he's just nominated. Hey, listen, we're sure he's going to win. If he's in the mix, he's going to win. ESPN News is projecting Jay as the winner in our exit polling. Reggie Redding the free throw, and here is Reynolds. They're now one when he left. They're now nine right now. I mean, is it that ratty game that Villanova gets after? Shaking you up, forcing you to do things quickly. They got to make a push. They got to make free throws. They got to make a push right here defensively. They can't just keep watching Georgetown launch up threes. They got to turn them over. Hibbert's such a great target against them. Look at that flash. Hibbert in with the four fouls. He had a tip at the Freeman miss. And the rebound down to Anderson. And Villanova has rallied back once in this game. They were 15 down. They came back to take the lead here in the second half. And he got number five down low on Hibbert. And he just got tangled up with Cunningham. Cunningham went to the deck. Hibbert bent over, never did it go all the way down to the ground. And a very short day at Madison Square Garden 
for Hibbert as he fouls out with four rebounds and no points in just over 15 minutes of action. You can see John Thompson really, his decorum is incredible. Just his tangling here, no reason. <laughs> I mean, he got to call it. It's sad, though. Uh, never got a chance to get untracked. One of those days, it tells you how deep this team is, how they can adjust to playing different styles of play. What's interesting, talking with John Paquette, he does a great job in the Big East office. He was talking about the top two teams, the two teams that play for the regular season title, head-to-head -head Georgetown and Louisville. They're so balanced. They're such true teams in the sense of the word. Neither one of them had a Big East player of the week all season long. That's Tells you something, doesn't it? Amazing. And when, was the last, when was the last time Roy Hibbert had a bagel in a ball game? I'm not so sure. It's a good time to have it in, though. You know, as an Emmy-nominated analyst, I would think you could get your own notes and maybe thumb through them and answer some of your own questions. You're right. I didn't anticipate him having zero. Yeah. And nobody else did. Well, now I feel obligated to, to look fetch it up. the answer for you. He's getting the Emmy for studio, by the way. <laughs> Are you saying his game analysis needs a little work? No, I don't no. get I don't get to do any with you guys. <laughs> a little pressure and they got numbers. And Pretty they good. attack and they continue to attack and they score and get fouled. Summers off a pass from Ewing. What unselfish play. Patrick, your father never looked that good passing the ball in this building. Unselfish and strong. And how about this, the adjustment at the end? This was all strength and athleticism by Dewan Summers using the left hand. This young man has a ton of ability, and he missed quite a bit of time over the summer and in the spring after having surgery on that foot. And that set his development back just a bit. But Dewan Summers is a big-time player. And Freeman, the pass that led to the pass that led to the goal. Unselfish. Still a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Nice run out by Freeman because he knows he's going to get support. One of the few mistakes Anderson's made lately, isn't it? He's going a little bit too fast. That's why I was making a point about there being a lot of time left. I mean, you don't have to get it all back right away. Jay Ray didn't think that was a travel. Here comes some pressure from Villanova, handled with ease by Georgetown. And that's been the pass, that diagonal pass that has broken the pressure. And they have not been afraid to attack early, and that's really helped them all game long. Well, pressure. Even though it's not tenacious, has given Georgetown a lot of problems in the recent meetings. Not so today. And another three rattled home by Dewan Summers. They're 63 as a team, tying the school record. How would you like that match? I mean, he's got power around the rim. Now he can take his game deep and burn you. Reynolds, they need it. They don't get it. It rolls off to Ewing. Under four minutes to go. Georgetown up by 12. And Georgetown not allowing second shots. It's been one tough one and out. To answer your question, Jay, the last time Hibbert did not score in a game was as a freshman. Sap, there's the new school record, and Jay Wright has seen enough. 17 threes. More than making up for the absence of any offense from Hibbert today. Last time Roy didn't score in a game was January 17th of 2005. Middle of his freshman year against the University of South Florida. The proud papa uh, looking on as they just keep knocking him down. Tray ball by the Hoyers. Wide open opportunities against the matchup. They're screening well. Cutting well and making that extra look. Drive, draw, and deliver. And what's impressive is everybody's getting into the act, whether it's Chris Wright or Jonathan Wallace. It has been impressive. Jesse Sapp has hit some. Dewan Summers, Austin Freeman. I mean, we, we've just had threes raining from everywhere and everybody. And Wright keeps them so deep, I think. Now, that addition on the bench, nine people able to provide a lift and be solid. Single game school record, 17 threes. It ties the Big East tournament record. We referenced it yesterday. West Virginia last year. 
made 17 threes in a first round win over Providence College. And there's still 338 to go in this one. They are 17 out of 28 from beyond the three point line today. 61 percent. I think that would be easily termed hot. And it's hot on this end of the floor as well. Great reaction. Summers does a nice job coming up on the wing and sliding back to his position. Length, strength, and athleticism on the part of this Georgetown defense. We got to beat Memphis. All right, guys. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. That'll be a tough task, and beating Georgetown a tough task here today as they've made 17 threes, the school record, on a day when Roy Hibbert did not score. From the shadows of segregation came basketball's unknown legend who changed the game forever. Black Magic presented by Russell and State Farm on ESPN Sunday at 9 Eastern. For more information, we encourage you as always to log on to ESPN.com. You've screened it, right? You know, one of the great stories from that series is uh, John Chaney. Mm -hmm. Who played in the old Eastern Cook, League? Matthew and Cookman, he went to. Yeah, and and also uh, you know played briefly for the Globe Trotters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he was, and he quit because he, he he said that's not basketball. <laughs> well, you know how serious he is about the game. But you know he was the Player of the Year in the Public League in Philly. Tom Roller was the Player of the Year in the Catholic League. Georgetown very intelligently going to burn some clock and make Villanova come out and chase. And this is just natural for them, too. It's within their offensive scheme. And it's every player on the floor for Georgetown is skilled. They can all dribble, they can all pass, they can all shoot. And they can really spread it out that way. One thing about Ewing, too, they like to bring him out at the top on a four-corner kind of a setup. Well, they're getting toward it now, just under 10 on the shot clock. He's not out there right now, but don't you think, based on what we've seen today, Chris Wright in the NCAA tournament is going to be a very valuable addition to this team. No well, question. He, he makes them nine deep. They get the charge. The basket should count. He let it go first. They are scoring. They did count the bucket for Jesse Sapp, and then he was called for the foul. Sapp has 23 points. Been a big part of the three-point success today. And now Villanova, if it stays this way, fellas, and it's hard to imagine they'll come back and win down by 17 right now. Well, they're on the bubble, and a lot of people, I spoke with Joe Lenardi this morning by email, and he said he thought they needed one more win here. Wow. And, and this again, Jay, the one you don't like, I mean, that speaks well for them. It does speak well for down them. Down the stretch. And I think Villanova's going to get in. I think they have won enough games against quality competition that they should be in the NCAA tournament. And when, when you come down to the end of the season, you have to beat the best team in your league in order to get in. That seems like an awfully high standard that you're laying it all on this last game. And I felt like they were in by winning well, yesterday. I don't think they're putting it all on the last game, but it's a chance to make their resume better. Absolutely. It's a chance. It's a great opportunity. But... You know, they, I think the resume is just fine to get in as it is. Let's say they get in. What's seeding? Be interesting. They would probably have a reasonable seed. I, I, I can imagine them in a nine. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. But getting in is the hard part. Well, it's like the old Dave Gavin line. You can play your way out of a bad seed, but you can't play your way into the tournament. Look at this kids pass the ball. I mean, that's just gorgeous, huh? And Ewing fouled with six seconds on the shot clock. The ball is humming. Is Pete Carrillo in the building? Well, this is reminiscent of yeah. the heyday at Princeton. And, you know, you wonder about people's perception of Georgetown. They won the regular season title for the second year in a row. They're ranked number nine in the country. They went to the Final Four last year. They really lost only Jeff Green. We say only. I mean, he's a lot of respect. Right. But right. everybody else back. They've had some nice new additions. And yet you don't get the feeling... But a lot of basketball people, to use that phrase again, Jake, believe that they're that good. The question's been raised, were they lucky? And John Thompson III has even said, yeah, we've been lucky a few times this year in those close games, but you have to put yourself in position to take advantage of the good fortune. Yeah, and after you get lucky so many times, if you want to use that phrase, that 
you wind up thinking maybe it's not luck. Maybe they've just got great toughness down the stretch. I think the one question you'd have is they don't really blow teams out. And, but, but this is a team that understands how to execute. And I think they're terrific. I, I think Georgetown's got a great chance to reach the Final Four. It depends a lot on matchups, though. Well, they are just running, and I think legs are failing Villanova at this point. But the ability to make deep shots really sets up their offensive scheme. And having Chris Wright back in, you can see knocking down two out of three threes in this ballgame. Look at that three-point shooting. Jesse Sapp, six of nine. Jonathan Wallace, five of six. All those coming in the first half. And that's big time. Summers missed the free throw. And they raised the question of how fortunate Georgetown has been after that regular season deciding head-to-head -head battle with Louisville. Rick Pitino talking about Georgetown said they've been lucky. They won tonight because they were better. Obviously good teams get luck, but a goaltending non-call, a push out of bounds, a Hibbert three. God bless them. They're closer to heaven than we are. Well, every good team wins a lot of those games on a, in a particular year. And that's the way it is. The Yankees used to get the bounces. <laughs> the Red Sox are, so to speak. So I think good things happen to good teams. Yep. And I think John Thompson's right when he said there's no doubt it takes luck, but at the same time, our group put themselves in position to be lucky. We believe in what we're doing and how we're doing it. So when luck kind of rolls around, we're there to take it. They didn't need any luck today. They were great. But as you know, I thought they played great against Louisville. And this is even better. And this is so efficient and solid. Well, they haven't played better offensively all no, year long. No, This has been absolutely stunning, the way they've shot the ball. And, and all without Roy Hibbert scoring a single point. And I love him on the sideline. You see him right next to the coach there. I mean, he's cheering for his team like he had 20 and 10. That's what it's all about, I think, when you got a good program. Well, let's start an ESPN-type debate. You know, we've heard, are the Rockets better without Yao Ming now that they keep on winning? Would Georgetown be better off without Roy Hibbert? Maybe they should just leave him on the bench. If they, they shoot it this well, they could. They would be better if they had Scola to back him up. <laughs> or, or Tracy to play as well. I'm just trying for an Emmy nomination by grasping on any ridiculous random question that I can find. And Roy would, Hibbert, in or out? They would. <laughs> They wouldn't want to play without him. Wallace, a rare miss from the free throw line. He's the most accurate free throw shooter and three-point shooter in school history. Four years, Georgetown prep. Got better each and every year. John Thompson III remembers Roy Hibbert coming out of high school, rolls his eyes, and he talks about Roy Hibbert had braids back then. Roy said, yeah, that was just a little phase. The numbers today of Roy are reminiscent of Jay's better games at Duke. <laughs> <laughs> Timeout Villanova. Some of the Hoya partisans don't like that with the outcome seemingly no longer in doubt. Scotty Reynolds for this 13th point. Bob Huggins made his first appearance at Madison Square Garden for the Big East Tournament yesterday in his first year as head coach at his alma mater. The Mountaineers, a hard-fought five-point win yesterday over a gritty Providence team. They'll take on Connecticut. They played earlier this month at the XL Center in Hartford, and the Huskies won that ball game by eight. And that, that is Bob Huggins' lucky outfit. It has That's to the be. third time he's worn. They wore it against Pittsburgh. Uh, hey. Wore it in yesterday's game. Wore it again today. You ever send your laundry out of the hotel in New York? It's expensive. Not everybody makes Emmy-nominated type oh, money. Here we it, it may not come back. <laughs> Aren't you glad we found out about that Emmy thing earlier today? Not particularly, today? no. Georgetown and Villanova. ESPN is projecting Georgetown as the winner. And they will await the victor of the Connecticut-West Virginia matchup to come your way next a few minutes in between. Quality studio entertainment between games coming your way on ESPN. The UConn fans out in numbers whenever they're in the garden. It's amazing the turnout they have. And it's a neighboring state here in the tri-state area. Thank you. you uh, the, thank you, Vasco can, can you name the three states in the tri-state area? I get two. <laughs> Said New Jersey's own Bill Raftery. No longer going by the nickname The Governor. <laughs> by acclamation. Uh, it's been a rough road for a lot of people. Timeout. Called by Freeman as Villanova came with the all-out press. 
Well, Villanova has been in the NCAA tournament each of the last three years with 20 plus win seasons under Jay Wright. Their fourth season in a row with 20 wins, but they'll have exactly 20 on their tournament resume this weekend. And we'll have to sweat it out. And of course, there's still a lot of games to be played in the coming days that could impact whether or not Villanova is in or out. Uh, he's done a great job coming down the stretch. Uh, not a whole lot of size. Trying to match up certain games. Drummond didn't play against Providence. But how about the passing of the Hoyas? I, mean, I just job. thought it was great today. You know, Jay Wright has done a great job, I think, at Villanova. And done it really, especially this year, with such a young team to have kept this team in it and to have gotten to this point where I really do believe they're one of the 34 best at-large teams. Now, obviously, not everything's been settled with regard to the automatic qualifiers yet, but I think we're going to see Villanova in the NCAA tournament. Now, if you get your Emmy, do you become a member of the selection committee? I don't think you ever, I don't think I could ever become a member of that. I just want you to know, Jay, the number one criteria is your performance in your last 12 studio appearances. <laughs> so, based on that standard that you've loved so much, it, it could be a problem. 16-point <laughs> lead as Georgetown plays Smart. it in. Summers got it back. Villanova tenaciously ball hawking. Shane Clark called for the foul. Don't you think the future is going to be brighter? I mean, Jay's done a nice job bringing the program along, but they have a beautiful new practice facility on their campus adjacent to the pavilion, and they were lagging behind the facilities. They aren't anymore. And well, he's made the commitment to stay there in recent names. His name's been, in recent years, his name's been for other prominent college jobs. There been a lot of rumors about NBA jobs, but he's made it very clear. He and his wife, Patty, love being a part of the Villanova community, and I, I think he's going to be there for a long time. I think they've made a commitment to him as well. Yes. I mean, he's, a, he's a lifer, a keeper, great style. Well, if you were critiquing him as a coach, I mean, what aspect, and there's so many aspects that goes into college coaching, would he not get the highest possible marks? I mean, on the court, off the court. Well, that's I mean, true. such a solid person and coach. I was trying to think maybe getting a big guy. <laughs> that's the only yeah, I mean, you know how hard really they are to come by. To try to find an area where you'd say Jay Wright and his staff have not done an excellent job. Well, the selection of a pink shirt on the Big East tournament team. And John the third. Yeah, what I mean, a got them ready. done a better job than him yeah. the last four years. Got them ready. Let me tell you, this is some different attack compared to the Louisville game, which they won and played well. What a performance by Jeff. Keep it passing. Keep it humming. What it's a, a hot potato. Well, his dad shrugged at the comparisons between John the Third and John Jr. or Pete Carrill. I would say this. I think John the Third is a better coach than his Hall of Fame dad offensively. You know, they oh, conceptually John, John, John lived off the a defense. lot more stuff, if you will. Yeah, that's a great point, because they lived off their defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just churned you up and attacked you. Good, solid game. And now I guess the Cats sit back and hope on Sunday night. Proud Papa as well. Well, yesterday, Villanova beat Syracuse 82-63. to Today, they lose to Georgetown 82-63. to So, Georgetown still undefeated all time as the number one seed of Big East Championship. Now 13-0 in that role. They'll play the winner of our next game tomorrow. The game coming up next is Connecticut and West Virginia. Coming up next on ESPN College Game Night Update presented by Liberty Mutual. And be sure to join us in approximately 20 minutes for our second game of the day here at the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal as West Virginia takes on Connecticut. We'll see you in a few minutes. Now let's send you back to the studio to John and Hubert.